the jump for the shit Off top when I speak All cap with the speech Till they caught up in the rapture I'm so out of line with the phrase game Let's take a break, been a long day Hit your line with your fog Green with the light sticks Maybe help me spark the idea Hey everyone, it's Dustin, the Alcohol Free Guru. If you want to learn to control alcohol and get free tips and coaching from me and other awesome coaches from around the world on how to live an incredible life while being alcohol free, then be sure to start now by subscribing and clicking the bell so you don't miss anything. To find out whether my program is right for you or not, check the description below. I am currently wearing the shirt that I got while at my favorite spiritual center in the world in Cambodia. I am at my lodge right now, which sits on Table Rock Lake in Eureka Springs, Arkansas, also known as Eufreka Springs. That's due to its creative, fun, and rainbow flag waving people. <laughs> The Lodge is where I am going to recreate and bring the Cambodia retreat to the U.S. The unit I'm currently in is an all-wood 1870-built train depot that is designed and dripping in Art Deco style. And I'm going to try to show you around a minute. I do really hope you get to come and spend at least a week here someday. The second tip for learning how to control your drinking is getting out of that massive river in Egypt, denial, and into the ocean of acceptance. The only way you're ever going to begin to control alcohol and the unprogramming process for controlling alcohol is to know and finally admit to yourself and to others that you are addicted to alcohol. Understand that there are different levels of addiction mild, moderate, and severe. Mild and moderate alcohol addicts are about 90% of drinkers, including me and what I used to be. We are extremely high-functioning people. The severe addict is the person who is literally turning up a bottle of vodka to start their day. So most people associate the word alcoholism with the severe addict. This is when the family finally gets together and says they must do an intervention because by this point, the person's life is completely shattered. Their kids, spouse, work people, friends, and probably want nothing to do with them. They have nothing left because addictive alcohol has completely taken them over. Each one of these people started out not knowing if they had what other programs refer to as the addictive gene, De defective allergy or personality. So they began just like everyone else does, just like me, and started drinking alcohol moderately. Each one of them heard the songs and commercials raving about how much fun alcohol is. Each one saw an average of five ads per day their entire lives saying that drinking alcohol was fun, cool, and sexy. None of them knew that alcohol caused cancer and 200 other diseases because the only warning on the label says not to drink it while you're pregnant, but to drink moderately and responsibly. Each one of these people was someone's baby, someone's child, someone's teenager growing up in a world where alcohol was viewed as the elixir of life. I'm going to walk you guys outside now. So was it their fault they became addicted to this toxic substance? Is it their fault? It's not their fault, and it's not your fault. It's the fault of our human collective unconscious illusion that says alcohol benefits us. I'm going to try to set this up. <laughs> Cameraman and guru. So it's a, the fault of big alcohol advertising. It's the fault of our culture not knowing or wanting to accept the fact that alcohol is addictive to anyone who consumes it. It's time to take responsibility for our past illusions and accept the reality that the person is not the problem. Alcohol is. It is time to treat alcohol like cigarettes by banning TV and radio ads for alcohol and warn our children on every bottle of alcohol that is highly addictive and causes cancer, just like cigarettes. 
I was very lucky to have my alcohol awakening before I became a severe addict. Addiction is never stagnant or on any kind of just regular plateau. You're either losing consciousness and sliding further down into addiction, or you're awakening and climbing up out of addiction. All severe addicts were once in the mild to moderate level of addiction, and all of them at that time were high-functioning people with jobs, family, and friends. Please, please, please get out of denial that you are addicted to alcohol before you slide into the severe level. All of today's severe addicts didn't see their addiction when they were at the mild to moderate level. They looked around and saw that the other 90% of drinkers were just like them. Unfortunately, those other people were high functioning addicts too. Just because it's common doesn't mean it's healthy, normal, or okay. The alcohol addiction test I'm going to share first with you is from WebMD. I really like this one because it acknowledges different levels of alcohol addiction. If you've had two or three of these symptoms that I'm going to list here in a minute, in the past year, you have a mild alcohol addiction. You have a moderate addiction if you have four or five of the symptoms. If you have six or more, that is severe. So count each one and see what your score is at the end. You may have an alcohol addiction if you drink more or longer than you plan to, have tried to cut back or stop more than once and couldn't, if you spend a lot of time drinking, being sick or hungover, if you want alcohol so badly you can't think of anything else, if you have problems with work, school, or family because of your habit or because you're sick after having alcohol. If you keep drinking even though it has caused problems for you or your relationships. That was definitely me and most of these were me. If you quit or cut back on other activities that were important to you in order to drink. If you have found yourself in situations while drinking or afterward that made you more likely to get hurt. And if you keep having alcohol even though it made you depressed or anxious, hurt your health or led to a memory blackout. If you have, have to drink more than you used to to get the effect you want. Pretty much every person I know that drinks has had that. If you found that you had withdrawal symptoms when the buzz wore off, like trouble sleeping, shakiness, restlessness, nausea, sweating, a racing heart, severe stuff like seizure or seeing, hearing, or feeling things that aren't there. The overwhelming majority of people who are addicted to alcohol are very high functioning. If you have done anything this is my list on the list below that I created. You are most likely addicted to alcohol. Just like I was before I became alcohol free. I've said or done most of these ridiculous things myself. So please don't think I am being judgy in any way. Uh, I think most of you will remember Jeff Foxworthy. You might be a redneck if comedy skit. Well, my list is you might be addicted to alcohol if number one, you can magically open a bottle of beer with parts of your body, tooth, elbow, armpit, foot, <laughs> or a cigarette lighter. Number two, you have signs up in your house that say things like alcohol because no great story started with a salad. Candy is dandy, but liquor is quicker. That is an especially wonderful message for kids to read on your wall every day. It's beer 30 or how about it's wine o'clock. Then over a half of your social network posts include alcoholic drinks or recipes for them. That's another sign that you might be addicted. Another one, you have been a moderate drinker since you became an adult and have not been able to be alcohol free 
for over 30 days without craving it. You might be addicted to alcohol. If you wear shirts with images of alcoholic drinks on them and little quips like 0% Irish, 100% drunk. Or adulting requires alcohol. How about the famous one everywhere? Mommy needs wine. How about you drink and drive especially with children in the car? Or you have ever tried to control your drinking? Dry January, sober October, a glass of water between every drink, counting drinks. People who can control their drinking do not try to control their drinking. It's a very big one. Uh, another re thing you might be addicted to alcohol is that you're still watching this video. And this next one is my personal favorite that you think loading the dishwasher means getting your spouse, partner, or roommate drunk. <laughs> I love that one. Uh, that one of your old drinking buddies becomes alcohol free and has the courage and love to tell you that you were addicted and you still insist that you can handle your alcohol just fine. You might be addicted to alcohol if you spend more time on the weekends drinking alcohol than you do alcohol free. You might be addicted if you throw your beer can out the truck window and your wife shoots it. My wife never actually did this because she missed. <laughs> uh, you think that there are a certain percentage of people who are diseased and can't handle their alcohol, but you can handle yours. That's a big telltale sign. You might be addicted if you spend more time drinking than you do exercising, meditating, enjoying a hobby, or you joke that drinking is your hobby. You might be addicted if you sneak booze into events or have ever hidden alcohol after the age of 21. You might be addicted if after a night out, you slur your words, stumble, lose your wallet or phone, and don't look for it until the next day. Or if you have ever taken any hangover helper pills or hangover helper drinks before you go out, you might be addicted if you and your drinking buddies share jokes and memes about alcohol more than really conversations and asking how each one of the other is. Or your kid, spouse, partner, parent, or loved one has asked you to cut back or not drink anymore. You might also be addicted if you drink as regularly as a person who is addicted to tobacco has smoked cigarettes. For example, a couple of drinks every other night for five years. You might be addicted if you have ever been too drunk to fish, golf, shoot pool, or go bowling. You might be addicted if you spew information, i.e. lies, about how amazing life is when you drink alcohol, how it is actually healthy for people to drink it, how your life cannot be complete without it, that you can't party, are boring, can't be wild and crazy, can't hook up, can't relax, can't just play golf, play pool, fish, go to the spa, or have any kind of party without it. And by the way, that is all big alcohol advertising doing a serious brainwashing job on you, just like it did on this little noggin right here. You might be addicted if you have ever said, it, said to others or yourself that there is a sandwich in every beer or that you are going to drink your calories instead of eating them. You might be addicted if you think you might be addicted. Woo! The wind just blew that down. Oh my goodness. Cameraman Dustin. <laughs> At it. You might be addicted if you think you might be addicted. You might be addicted to alcohol if you have bargained with the universe that you will never drink again. If it cures your drunkenness or hangover, then in the same prayer, apologized in advance for lying about never drinking again. You might be addicted to alcohol if you have more containers of alcoholic beverages in your house than water, milk, sodas, etc. You might be addicted if you know deep down that alcohol is really bad for you in almost every way, 
but you can't stop drinking it. All right, that is tip number two, acceptance and getting out of denial. Accept where you are right now, once and for all, so you can begin to live a fun, alcohol-free life that is full of joy. So besides clicking the bell and subscribing so you don't miss the third quick tip of how to control your drinking, which is why you are not an alcoholic, that's the third tip, please also ask any questions you have in the comments below so I can answer them for you on a future episode. I am with you. You will never walk alone. The God in me recognizes, honors, and loves the God in you. Thank you.